Hello, hello! So I just wanted to welcome you back um, to my channel. Um, I did decide to do a crafting video since I am still working on a few hair things um, right now um, that I am not ready to do quite yet. So instead of making you um, wait for my newest video, I figured there's some crafty people out there that uh, just wanted to learn a new skill. So I figured what a great way to do a crochet video. Now this is my second attempt at trying to do this. It is so much harder than I thought, but we're going to try this again and we are going to pray that it's going to turn out well. So all you will need is your choice of yarn. I'm using the Red Heart Super Saver. It's because it's inexpensive and I got a lot as a donation. Um, you will need a crochet hook. I am using the size 5. I don't know if it will show. Um, size 5 or 5 millimeter or H um, and then sorry that is nothing and a pair of scissors I like to use the kid scissors because again how long products take to make um, if I leave my materials out my kid will get hold of my scissors so kid scissors um, and I do forgive me my son is sleeping taking nap time so he has about another hour before I need to wake him um, or before he wakes up and I'm trying to keep my volume down. So I do apologize if the volume is, if my voice is pretty low, it's, that is the reason. So I'm going to try to show you a few basics and then a pattern um, that I memorized mostly. Um, it's gonna be a dishcloth. It's super easy to make. Um, it's actually just half double crochet all the way across, but we have to work our way up to half double crochet. So I am going to get readjusted and start showing you some of these great movements so that you can see what I see when I am crocheting. <laughs> so I will be right back. Okay, so now I'm back. Sorry, I had to go and get my lamp, my, my crafting lamp, which I'm hoping is not blinding you on one side of the camera. So we're trying to do this again. So, okay, so to start out with is always the placement of everything so you have your crochet hook your cro uh, your yarn um, and I'm going to show you the basics first to start out with and then we're going to start with our dishcloth so what you do this is called your tail you always want your tail in your hand and what you're going to do is what's called a slip knot you're going to wrap your finger around and you're going to make this X you want to see that so what you do with your crochet hook or your hand if you can crochet hook I find it a little bit easier is you want to stick your crochet hook underneath the first part and over the second. You're going to hook it and you're going to pull that through. You're going to release your fingers towards out and then you're going to tighten that knot. That is a slip stitch or slip knot. So what makes this a slip knot is that you're able to loosen it using your crochet hook side and tighten it with your yarn side. Um, since I am a righty, that's the correct side. My left is my yarn, my right is my crochet hook. So now to tighten and get your tension for your yarn. What I do is normally this for comfortable positioning of the yarn. So I wrap my pinky around, I flatten my hand, and I wrap it around with my index finger to create this effect. This will keep the correct tension right here where I'm actually working the yarn. Um, and then I also hold my work. Once you start to chain, you'll see what I mean. I'm going to also hold my work with all on my left hand. Um, my yarn is on my side here next to my hip underneath my lights. And here we are. So this is my placement of my crochet hook. So my left is going to do all of the work. Um, so this is what you do. So you're going to hear me use the term. Sorry, you're getting a little crooked. Um, you're going to hear me use the term yarning over and pull through quite a lot in this uh, tutorial. So what yarning over essentially means is wrapping your yarn over your hook. Now the motion is what's important to help you get the least amount of tension in your wrist. So what you're going to do is your hook is actually going to be facing upward. I'm going to come a little closer so you can see that. I hope it focuses for you. So your hook is upward. You're going to wrap around and you're going to go downward and that kind of locks it into place. So that is your motion that you're going to be performing. So again, I'm trying to make sure the lighting is showing what I'm doing since I am using a rather dark um, yarn here. So again, so trying to make sure it focuses for you. 
it's a little off, but that's okay. So what you're doing is the hook is upward, you're wrapping around and you're rolling it downward. So this is gonna make it easier to when you pull through and pulling through is simply pull through. That is a chain, just made a chain. So again, yarning over that motion, pull through, that's two. Now total, we're gonna chain 15 chains, okay? Um, if you can see that, oh, that's much better with the lighting, perfect. So that's two chains right there. I'm gonna try to keep my shadow out of my chain work so you can see what I'm talking about. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. That's already five, so just 10 more. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. It's very helpful to hold your work as you're going. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And if you always have to stop to count, that's okay as well. It's really easy to count. So you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we need five more. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through. If I did my math correctly, that was our last one, but you always want to check your work because the foundation is the most important part. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So this is actually getting to the part of where you're going to start your pattern. Most patterns will tell you to chain an additional chain, um, which is important based off of the stitch you're doing. And this particular one, we are doing half double crochet. Excuse me. For anything more than a single crochet, you're gonna always chain two, unless it's a longer stitch. Um, reading your pattern, it'll tell you how many chains to do. Sometimes that chain level will be including this part. Other times it's, you still need to build up. So for this particular one, we need to chain two more stitches. So it'll be 17 total. So chain or wrap, yarn over chain or pull through, sorry, yarn over, pull through again. So that'll make your 17. This actually, these two chains are going to be your first uh, stitch, however. So you will not count those when you're going backwards. So this is the next part. This is the stitch learning part now for anywhere you need to pause and rewind. But, uh, you totally can so that you can do all of this in your speed. So what you're gonna do for the half double crochet, um, this is half double, not single or double. This is just half double, it's right in the middle. And this is one of my favorite stitches because it's super easy to do. So what you're gonna do is yarn over and you're gonna go into the third stitch from the hook. So that's one, two, and three. I'm actually holding it right here. What you're gonna do is go right into the center of that stitch. It should be very simple to do. This is what your yarn or what your hook should look like. I'm trying to show it in the lighting. You're gonna yarn over again, pull through just that one. Now you have three loops on your hook, right? Can you see? So you're gonna yarn over once again and you're gonna pull through all three of those loops. This is why it's important to turn your hook downward so you can slide right through. That's a half double crochet, okay? So you're gonna continue that motion. I'm gonna walk you through a few more, um, and then it's just repetitive. So again, you're gonna yarn over, you're gonna go into the very next stitch, which is right next to it. So this was our first stitch. The very next one is right there. And on the first row, it is difficult to see, but it's right there. You're gonna go right through the center, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all, okay? And what you'll notice is once you crochet a couple, when you look at the top, they're gonna look like bees. That's where you're working, okay? These don't look like bees quite yet, but they will after this row. This is the hardest row of any job, of any crochet project you'd work on. Always the first row is the toughest. Okay, so again, yarning over, going into our next space, okay? So that's right there, right here. Okay, can you see that? You're gonna put your hook through, yarn over, Okay, 
yarn over again and pull through. That's all you're going to hear in most projects is yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. That is the process and it's repetitive. So again, yarn over. You could as you just saw me, I can also use my yarn to pull out, to wrap around. I just noticed that does give a little bit more um, wrist action and my wrist will tire out a lot quicker. Um, so again, you know, next stitch, which is right there. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. This is why I like half double crochet because it's super easy. It's just repetitive and it's so much quicker. You'll see why in just a moment when I show you double and single. So next stitch, after we already yarned over, the way you can tell is I have two wrapped around my hook. Next part, you go into your hook. next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Um, now something to, to keep in mind is when you do go through your stitch after you yarned over, it is a very quick motion. If it looks like this even, where it looks like you've crossed over, that is still your yarning over. You don't wrap again. So you want to see one, two, three, four when you go through your hook. Okay? And then you pull through and you have three again and you yarn over and you pull through all three. So once you start to practice and get used to the motion, you'll start to speed up and getting used to that muscle memory. Um, and you'll be making projects left and right like I am. What I like about half double crochet, it makes it really thicker, so it's really nice for like gloves and hats, um, things to keep you warm with. Um, I also like this for this dishcloth because it helps with scrubbing, which is really nice. Um, if you're actually going to use it. If you are going to use the dishcloth, you do want to use 100% cotton um, if you intend on cleaning um, because it does wash easier and it is a bit more forgiving. Um, the others might shrink or might not clean as well, so it does become a little bit difficult. But I like mine as to be decorative, so I don't actually use mine. All right, so we're getting to the end, and as you can see, it's getting a little harder to hold, which is totally fine. But you do still have two stitches there, okay? So yarn over, go through this stitch here, to second to last, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. You still have one more. This is always the trickiest part, okay? Um, yarn over. You still have a stitch there. It may not look like it, but you do. It's right there. You have a knot right here. You still have that stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through. Now, as you can see, my work started to curl up. As you can continue to grow this way, your work will start to lay flat. Um, so that does happen. But the more you practice, the more it'll be easy to keep that straight for you. So now once you get to the end of your work, um, especially if you're working in a flat square um, or a rectangle, it will tell you to chain and turn your work. This is what that looks like. Since we're doing half double crochet, that would be chain two. Now that I want to show you the next stitches, you can chain one or two depending on what we're doing. So to do that, you just chain, you just yarn over, pull through your loop, and you turn your work. That's exactly what that means. You always want to work um, left to right when you're right-handed, and I believe it's the opposite when you're left-handed. Um, if you're left-handed, please search for a left-handed tutorial to help you with that. Um, okay, so now I'm going to show you single crochet and double crochet on the same row, just to show you the difference of what I'm uh, referring to. So with single, you only need to chain one because that's going to get you your height. You do not yarn over. To begin with you just go straight into your as i mentioned before now that you look from the top you can see that they look like little v's that's where your work is so this is the first stitch right here right underneath right so to yarn to do a single stitch you just go directly into the stitch yarn over pull through and you're gonna have two on your loop just like or on your hook just like that yarn over pull through that is a single crochet so to do that again, you go directly in. Oops, I'm sorry, didn't realize I was offering. I'll show you again in the lighting. I'm trying to go towards the lighting, I'm so sorry. So you go directly into your next, my thumb was in the way. <sighs> you go directly in to your next hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. That is single. Now to do double, 
Let's rechain it because it keeps it neat. So chain two, turn it over. Now to do double is the same as half double, um, except for one added step. So yarn over, just begin, go into your stitch, yarn over, pull through. Again, we have three now on our hook. Sorry, angle the wrong way. Three on our hook, yarn over. This time, instead of pulling through all three, you're gonna pull through the first two loops. Go pull through two, yarn over again, pull through the last two. That is a double crochet. So to show you again, yarn over, go into your next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's the only difference between half double and double. Um, and then you saw the difference between single. So it's just how many times you're yarning over and pulling through. Um, I like half double again because it's a fairly quicker. Um, it's one less step and it's still the thickness of a double crochet. Okay, so I have already took those chains off and we're going to continue with half double. So it's the same steps from before. So yarn over, pull through. Now you have three loops. Yarn over, pull through all three. So we're just going to continue that. I just wanted to show you the difference for those that have never practiced crochet before. Um, the difference between double, single, and half double. So half double is just happens to be the height and the ease of a single crochet, but the height of a double crochet. I like it because it's right in the middle, just like how I like it. All right, so yarn over next stitch yarn over pull through you have your three yarn over all three pull through all three super easy and you're just continuing this all the way across and you'll see how you're going to speed up with small projects like this this is practice um, for you and i'm actually in the process of making um pillows, pillowcases for my nieces for Christmas. Um, so it's going to be super cute. Hopefully they're not watching so they don't know what their Christmas present is. But if they are, I'm not going to show you what they look like because yeah, I'm smarter than that. And <laughs> don't want to show you what your present looks like ahead of time. Um, but yes, this is super easy um, and very forgiving. I love this because it's very relaxing. I can sit and watch a movie and have a project by the time the movie ends. Um, you usually don't need anything else until you're completely totally done. That will be a tapestry needle or yarn needle and um, a pair of scissors just to cut off or to yeah to bind off. So I wanted to show you the end again. So once you get building up it's very important for these two rows to be correct because this is your base. If this gets messed up, the rest just is going to continue to shrink. So what you want to do right here, if you look at it from above, you will notice it kind of curves down, but you still have a V right there. So this is your last stitch in this row. It's very important that you don't skip this. So sometimes it is missed. Um, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through again. So now that it looks like a square again, a way to check your work to make sure you're on track is simply counting how many you have. So again, it's the V's up top that you want to count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So you do have 15, so that means we're on track. So again, you chain two to continue on in this pattern. And it's just half double crochets, again, right across. So next stitch. Pull through, yarn over, pull through. Um, but yeah, when when in doubt, count how many stitches you have crossed. Um, if you feel you've messed up, it's very easy to undo. All you do is you pull upward for your loop to get a little bit bigger, just like I did there, and then you simply pull your yarn. And it'll undo until you've gotten to the part where you've messed up. That's why I love this um, type of crafting it's very forgiving I do also knit knitting is a little bit harder when you do mess up however it is also harder to mess up once you get the hang of everything um, not saying that you can't mess up it's just it's a little bit tougher to 
crochet, you can forget a stitch or, um, or whatever, and it's very forgiving. I've done blankets where I've had to start over and go a couple rows back because I've missed a stitch and it started shrinking. Um, but you never notice it until you're almost to the end. And it's uh, quite disappointing, but that's one great thing about crochet is you can fix it. Um, so again, like you're getting to the end, you're seeing how you're getting there and you're seeing I have three more left. You should just make sure you never forget that last one to keep it even. So last two. It does, depending on your tension, it might get a little tight. That's okay. You can start to loosen your, your tension as well. So this is the last one. And again, we're going to ch check our work. I always stop at the beginning stages to count my rows or to look at my work. It still looks pretty square on each side. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm out of frame. So it's still pretty square on each side. So we're just gonna count again. So I'm gonna count from this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we're on track. So yeah, that's all you do. Okay, so I hope that that was very helpful for you. I did do this prior because I did try this in my mom's club as a crochet club and ah, one hook was coming off. Um, this is actually the dishcloth right here. So it's very um, easy to do. Um, this maybe after a course of time took me like an hour or so. Um, so you build it up to how you want it. I'm actually probably going to make mine into a pot holder um, just because I like it better as a square once I got it built up. But it's very soft and this is with again Red Heart yarn um, so it doesn't have to be anything extravagant um, to build this but um, how cute is that you know what I mean? So that is what it looks like. Um, again I did probably about 20 rows. So yeah, sorry, didn't mean to make that look creepy. Um, so yeah, that's all you do. Um, and I love how simple the pattern is. Um, but yeah, that is what I showed you here, what this will build up to. Okay, so 15 stitches. Um, I actually used, I did a couple more on the end. I think I did up to 20 um, across and then about 20 rows in. So that's it's just the adjustment that's also what's also great about patterns and crocheting you can adjust them to be your own so and everyone's just gonna look a little different so but anyway that is it thank you so much for watching i really hope that you enjoyed um and if you could smash that like button for me i'm trying to get some followers um and if i can make a dollar doing this uh type of videos then that would be great Again, share any projects that you're doing. Comment below if you want me to, um, if you like these type of videos, if you want to see more crafty things, um, just let me know. All right, I'm going to sign off. Bye-bye.